Welcome everyone to our special Zoom bombing edition of uh, our virtual bridge sessions. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we experienced a, a slight hitch earlier on, but we're all good to go. Um, and, and James has made it back into the room, who is the star of the show, really, who's going to be discussing today, who has, I think you have to win a prize, first of all, for the most interesting title. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to, rival, trying to rival your title, that was what it was. You, you always have a, an imaginative title, and it. it's just kind of descriptive, so I thought I have to outdo Kenzie. <laughs> well, today, <laughs> today, it's, I, I don't, because I've just deleted the Google Doc as it was being hacked as well. <laughs> was it what, um, I, I know worms were in there. Worms and middle, middle and worms? You know, you're releasing worms into middle, so right <laughs> one run many times. Releasing worms into middle. S seriously, that's going to stay with me from this point forward. <laughs> okay, so today's session, um, essentially it's just 20 minutes of, of James explaining how to release worms into middle. Uh, and then we'll just open up the mics and have a bit of a discussion. Um, yeah, so James, over to you. Give us your worms. Let me just share this screen. Uh, oh, host disabled screen sharing, so you need to enable that. Oh, oh, see, <laughs> oh, it's all that tie down thing. I'm just going to, I'm going to make you host. There you go. You have okay. the power. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, all right, please, so then I should say that at points I may interrupt you to allow someone to come into the room. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Right. <laughs> um. So. Um. Obviously, the plugin itself, after all the kind of uh, disruption we've had. Uh, so, the plugin in question, which we'll post a link to and are distributing in some ways ad hoc database queries, um, which is that the idea of that is that you get one person nominated or one of many people nominated in your organization to write those queries, uh, as the name suggests, and then those queries can be stored in a, in a library of queries, and then you can choose who is able to run those queries. Uh, so, that's the download link. Obviously, we can circulate that. Um, I'll show you what the, this wee thing seems to get in the way. Um, uh, I'm trying to find the right page. It's, it's quite annoying that. Uh. So in, interestingly enough, in the Zoom recordings, even though we can see um, a row of faces on one side of the screen, in the actual recording itself, it only places your face at the top right of the screen. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's the banner at the top getting in the way a wee bit. Um, right, so obviously we've got, this is what the plugin looks like. It's, it's obviously it's a library of uh, pre-recorded uh, queries that I've set up. Um, I'll, I'll step through some basic SQL to show you the comparison of what, the, what, what this plugin can do that others can't. So the other plugin that we use is called Moodle Adminer, which is more similar to PHP My Admin. It's basically PHP My Admin ported into Moodle. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with that, that is just it's a database manipulation tool, uh, which looks like that. It just allows you raw access to the database. So the instance of Moodle that we're currently using for demo purposes is actually quite useful because it's it's an externally hosted test Moodle that we've got. So it's literally there's there's nothing on it. Uh, it's it's a stock Moodle, uh, vanilla Moodle. Um, so this is one of the tables that I like to use when I'm, I'm using SQL. Is that it's in every version of Moodle, so it's been part of the, the database, the, the vanilla database. It's the roles table, which defines um, the basic roles, uh, the stock and any custom roles that you set up. But I just use this bit for any testing because it's such a small, uh, compact table. Um, so obviously, I mean, you don't need to be advanced to SQL, but I'll show you just a, the, the concept of uh, the queries try to get nice cut that under the banner. It's quite is there any way of pinning that banner up to the top without the zoom banner? <clears throat> uh, well we, we don't actually see the zoom banner. Yeah, but I can't when I try to click it, it's clicking the zoom banner. I think you, you might be able to the top, um, minimize. You can just click on the top bar and yeah, move, move it down to the bottom. Right, yeah. Minimize yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I should just say for everyone. So that, that James is um, a, a developer, but with very good uh, understanding of the educational aspects of how IT integrates with teaching within colleges. So he's, he's, he's one of those developers that, that doesn't always say no <laughs> <laughs> to you if you're a lecturer. So that, <laughs> and, and, and I have a lot of respect for people within IT and, and James has a good understanding of both. And the other aspect is 
other than being a, a kind of coding and database wizard. So today we're talking about running SQL queries on a Moodle database, but customizing those so that other people can use them. So you can see some really interesting reports from within Moodle. So when you see scripts and SQL um, appearing on the screen, if you're like me, I just feel naturally more intelligent by the fact that I'm viewing Cody bits on, on the screen. It just makes, just by osmosis, just by the fact that I'm in the same virtual room as James, I, I naturally feel more intelligence. So just sit back, just soak it in and experience all the goodness. That's my advice. Um, so as a wee demo, we'll return uh, just two fields from this table, just to show you how SQL would be written by a, a developer compared to how the, the plugin uh, makes that easier. So in this case, we've got the, the ID and the short name. So we want to return the ID and the short name from the role table. Uh, so simply just putting a new SQL query in, uh, select ID and short name uh, from the table middle row. Uh, so as simple as that, I mean, it's one of the simplest SQL queries you can have. You run that and then you get obviously these, these two from that table. So that's how we would, we would use this plugin to obviously write a bit more advanced queries than that, but to turn various different pieces of data. Uh, so that's, that's how the, the adminer operates. So you've got the, the two fields here. Where it differs within using that within the ad, uh, ad, ad hoc sorry, uh, query uh, tool is that you can obviously predefine. So I've, I'll create a new category. I'll show you just the steps going through that. So you would create a new uh, your category would help. Uh, so we'll manage report categories, we'll create one for this session, obviously call it virtual bridge. I like the fact you're keeping it on brand. See the way you slip that in? That's... Yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously it's like any kind of administration in Moodle, it's just a wee form there. So you put virtual bridge. Uh, Add that new category there. Uh, then we'll go back to that dot database queries. Uh, so I want to add a new query. So as we saw before, we wanted we'll do the most basic query, which is the role table. So call it role. Uh, and then the description is a week in a teaching and, and usability tip. I find that you could just describe what the query does. But what I find is to put uh, instructions either either instructions on how to use it or uh, assumptions maybe the query are both. Um, so, for instance, we'll say uh, returns uh, roles from role table. Uh, we get into more advanced features of this plugin. There's maybe uh, fields and filters that you'd want to apply that the user would be able to apply, and you describe how to use them. But for now, we'll just put returns that. Uh, so, we'll do select. The difference in this one uh, is just a, a wee subtle difference which you'll get. It's in the instructions how to use the plugin. Rather than use the prefix MDL, which is how uh, the middle database refers to the tables, you have to use the word prefix. Uh, and that's to assume that you're using potentially different prefixes. We have found ways around that, but they're a bit hacky. So we just, it's no kind of skin off our nose to, uh, to just uh, use that prefix. So you've got the query, so you've defined the query. Actually, gives you before you, you go any further, you can actually verify that the SQL is valid. So that's to say that the query will actually work. So you click that to validate it, and it says, right, okay, it'll give you a warning, a red text warning underneath if that was invalid. It gives you details of the, the advanced features such as uh, form functionality that you can put in, or placeholders, etc., date pickers. Um, obviously, this query doesn't have any filters in it, it's a very basic query, so I'll, I'll show you that in a more advanced query. Um, one of the caveats you can set is who can run the query. So administrators, that's only people with full site administration access. Or you can go into the rules within Moodle and then there's obviously uh, capabilities for this plugin to say I want course managers to be able to run the query or I want editing lecturers but not uh, non-editing lecturers to run the query. For now it's safe obviously because this is signed in using admin accounts so also just use it as administrators. The default uh, for the number of rows returns, so if you get large queries or large data sets, it can obviously go in uh, to tens of thousands of rows. But you've, you've seen this as a relatively small table, so it's safe to leave it at 5,000. 
the plug-in settings are actually set to 5,000. So if you want any more than 5,000, you have to follow the instructions, which send the zip file on how to up that limit, or else you're, you're kind of that upper limit is enforced anyway. Uh, the on-demand and scheduled section of the query. So on-demand is, as it suggests, you just want to click it and run it at any given point. But the scheduled aspect of the query, you can schedule it based on these presets, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. Uh, you can select the time, of course, that you run it as well. Um, <clears throat> there's a further set in there uh, to set the demo. It's going to be in that file. So at the moment, we'll leave it as on-demand, and uh, show you how an on-demand query works. Uh, the only other thing we want to do is also put it in the virtual bridge category there, so we'll select that category. So as soon as they save the changes, this query will run. Uh, and then obviously you see that output. And like running it through AdMiner, you've got the option there to download these results as CSV. Uh, so if we go back to how the, the member of staff would see that, so for the argument's sake, we've delegated this to course managers to check what roles are available in Moodle. So they would then see, everybody sees this one page, but only the queries you've got permission to run, you'll be able to see. So if you're an administrator, you'll see everything. But if you're a course manager, you'll only see the ones to course manager. And likewise, if it's an edit and lecture, you'll only see the ones for that particular role within the site. Uh, so obviously, with the, the lecturer or whoever course manager would click that query, run it, roll. Uh, as we've seen before, they get that uh, output. Uh, it tells you, you know, that when it was last run. So that's obviously uh, the, the run that we just done, how long it took to run. But for audit purposes, the, the site administrator can also see that, um, obviously, with uh, that log as to when it was last run. So you download it as a CSV. I'm, I'm actually sharing the Chrome session so you not see it, but it would just obviously prompt to download a, an Excel file in CSV format that obviously can use for your audit purposes. I can show you a similar one. So we'll do the same one uh, again, but we'll do that for the point of view of being a scheduled query. So if you want to return, uh, you've got a shared mailbox, for example, and you want to send to that shared, shared mailbox by email, a list of all the roles. Um, so say you want to send the HR department or the e-learning department, which roles you've got to add a new query. Uh, and we'll call it scheduled roles. Uh, so likewise, save that. Uh, And you can always say it in the next box to tell us this slide TV. Uh, and then obviously description goes in there, um, but instructions. So you can do it again, you can verify it, same as you've done before. Uh, and then you go down further, and you've got obviously you've got that permissions, so you can change the permissions if you want to do manager, for example. I find if you're doing a scheduled one, you're as well leaving it in just administrators because administrators are probably going to be concerned with scheduled queries rather than staff. So we want to do it, instead of doing that, we want to do it as a, a weekly query, <coughs> excuse me, a weekly query, for example. So then you can say, uh, for instance, you've got an email address there, say hr at uh, .com, whatever, uh, yeah, your organisation. Um, and then you obviously save that uh, and go and uh, save the changes. We're going to do that just now. What we'll do is I'll put it at Uh, so I'm sending that to a webmaster account. I uh, want to put it in the virtual bridge category and then save it. So it will run to give you a preview. Uh, uh, or in case it's username, sorry, yeah, that would help uh, admin. Uh, so it's a username that you put in there rather than that. So you'd have to have a Moodle account for that person, but you can set up one that nobody logs into uh, for the generic account. So put an admin, uh, which is attributed to that account, and that saves it. Uh, and likewise, it just it will sit in there as a scheduled query. So say the weekly queries is that one. Uh, so you can go in and check the permissions to see who it's sending to, etc. But the way that's set up just now, that will send to our shared mailbox every week unless we stop it, or I stop uh, the roles. Uh, where it becomes a bit more complex is when you add in these placeholders. So for instance, you can get it to appear like a, a form. Um, which one of the ones you use for that is transferring roles between staff. Uh, so as you've seen before, that top tip I use in the instructions and the description query so that people are, are aware of how to use it. Because if you're distributing this to staff, they might get a bit uh, fearful as to what they're, they're doing or what to put in the right area. 
So I kind of gave a step by step right into the username. So this particular query is if you've got lecturer A is uh, stepping down from the post uh, and lecturer B is taking over, what we find a lot of the time is that the head of that department will just say, give lecturer B the, the permissions that the person that the lecturer A had. Uh, and obviously you can upload those with CSV, but it's quite a tedious task to then go through and check what the permissions are. Uh, so I've set up that query such that they can put in the new staff details, John Smith, uh, and obviously the uh, new staff username, John.Smith. Uh, and you put John Smith. Uh, and then you've got, uh, obviously, the new staff email, John. And then the current staff username, so that's the re reference to who you want to replace. In this case, we've only got admin, really. So uh, we'll do that and run that report. Uh, so obviously, if there was any rows there, it would return what rows is Obviously, it's a vanilla instance, but it would return the rows in which the CSV would be basically in the format that you could export it out to then import it back into Windows and upload user CSV. Um, obviously, the, the instructions are there, so you run the query, download the CSV, and then go into upload users in Moodle and then do that. I'll show you the date picker. Um, so, as it suggests, there's, there's hints and tips in the, the query itself. So, say um, users uh, are roles after right, users. So, say, and then um, In this case, we're going into the middle uh, users table, so username uh, and uh, first name and last name. Uh, and we're going to return that from, uh, from middle users. Uh, and we're going to specify the criteria. So actually, it tells you underneath, it gives you all the, the placeholders and tips here. So it's saying uh, the one we're looking at is the date. Um, so uh, I'll just show you that. Um, yeah, if, the, if it ends the character date. So the placeholder format is uh, where uh, time created equals, and then it's Uh, so when I run that, it will then detect that we've asked for a, a specific form field in that. Um, what it should do. So you can see now that it's detected you, you want to do a filtered field. So you can leave that as a default. You can set the default value now as being uh, the not first of January uh, 2020 at midnight. Uh, again, we'll want to just leave it as an administration query for this example. And we want to put it in the virtual bridge category. So when you save that query, um, then you've got a date picker. Uh, so you're saying, uh, Display users created after a date. So if you're the lecturer going in and running that, or the course manager, for example, you go into Virtual Bridge and you go, you're the HR manager and you want to see what new staff have started or now get access to Moodle. Uh, you go into the users created after date and then you've got a date picker, obviously, as, as we suggested. So we want to see everybody after the 1st of January. Um, so do that, that should be okay. So now we've got nobody started then. So we want to do uh, 1st of January 2019. Uh, I
Just set it to 1990. Yeah, I know. I'd kind of figure out why it's... Uh... But it's, it's interesting because now you can see the potential for... You could create these kind of reports and you can make them visible as part of a course only to lecturers. Yeah, you can delegate it to any, based on the role. So obviously you saw that there's a specification for the role. Um, I think I've got... So does that mean, like, for example, in the current situation, for every lecturer, you could stick a block on a Moodle course that said, show me how often all of my, or all of my stat, my students, have at last logged into Moodle or completed an exercise. You, you could go down to that level of yeah. detail. Yeah, I mean, anything that you can pull out of the database, you can then uh, obviously enable staff to see that data. One of the examples we use is the, is the HR manager, the CPD manager, who then checks who's achieved courses within a certain period and who's not. Uh, so they can return data for all the courses for the staff CPD courses, and they can see the date achieved and the members of staff. So they can see uh, a, a course who's still to complete. So I've set the opposite in that case. So I said between these dates, show who's completed or not completed the course. Um, so then they can, and who their manager is, for example, so they can say John Smith's not done his courses, line managers, Bill, uh, send an email to Bill. And obviously because it's got the line manager's email in there, they can then do a mail merge based on that output in the HR department. And they can send an email out to all the managers saying, here's the members of staff in your area who have not completed CPD, please remind them. And then obviously the managers then at their discretion will say to the members of staff. Uh, we use it for online learning as well. So we use it for... Um, the activity so we get obviously online users who do completely online courses and they've maybe not whether they've accessed the course is another thing so we send them a gentle reminder saying you signed up for a course you paid for it but you've not done anything do you need any help getting access to the course and do it? obviously the distance learning administrators run that query and then do that as a as a mail merge as well um, just to, to touch base with the students uh, to kind of track activity so can, can I ask, like anyone else in the room, can you think of, is there any report that you would want to run if you consider yourself in the position of a lecturer looking at your course? Is there some kind of information that you just want to see appear with one click um, that would be useful to you? And so specifically, I'm, I'm targeting this question towards people like Alistair and other potential lecturers in the room. Oh, although, Alistair, you're not a lecturer, right? Okay, I get that wrong. Um, well, anyone who ha who has a kind of teaching and learning perspective, you might have to unmute yourself if you if you want to make a comment. I feel Carol's going to say something. Yeah, I, I can see. I was actually checking Moodle this morning to see how many of my class had uh, logged in. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that and it was took me ages. I had to go in and out everybody. So that would be very beneficial. So what you would be looking for is like a single button that just told you who logged in or when they last logged in and have yeah. that present on screen. So is that is that a simple task, James? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously you would get your return user data and the course enrollment data. Um, just because that's a vanilla Moodle, obviously for GDPR purposes, there's not much on it, which um, I should maybe create more test cases. Um, but uh, we've got a list here. This is uh, our SharePoint list, and it's quite extensive of all the SQL queries we've created over the years. Um, so what, yeah. what kind of what are the most popular kind of queries that you've set up that are useful for teaching staff? Is there is there any particular example you can think of? And um, when we were pushing out turn that in, we ran a query to see obviously the it picks up from the member of staff. So the member of staff is the department that they the work for in the Moodle profile. So that's another feature of the, the ad hoc plugin that when you, when the query's been run, it can detect who's running the query and then tailor data towards them. All oh, right, so it okay. Can, it, it can read from the profile field that they're a member of the business and computing department. So it can return, for this instance, it was when we were rolling out turn in assignments and we were saying that departments are kind of lagging behind. Some departments are lagging behind on the, the use of turn it in. So we can pull out, obviously, from the database what turn in assignments have been created. Uh, and then we can say that in the business department, there's 20 turn it ins but in the sports department, there's only two. Uh, so obviously the head of the departments can run that. And then they can obviously, uh, in this instance, it was the heads of sector meeting. They would go and they would say, right, okay, this is how many. Uh, obviously the, the APs as well can look. So but can, 
can you think of, of, of use cases, like in this current situation? So obviously, West College Scotland are encouraging staff to deliver more via Moodle and, and online sessions. So what kind of report, and anyone can jump in with an idea, what kind of useful report that you could put in front of lecturers so that they could run it whenever they wanted to, um, might, might you be able to generate? So this, this is specifically for lecturers with their classes, what kind of information could you bring up and show them on screen through a, a, a customized query like this? Well, because the query is uh, context sensitive as well, so it can detect who the user is, detect what course it is that they're, they're referring to. So we could, uh, so if there's a business lecture or teaching the uh, HNC business, uh, we could use a query which is used for distance learners that say users not logged in within the past seven days. So you could get a list. I mean, obviously you can get that through the front end as well of Moodle. Uh, you can get, uh, you can look at the activity log last logged in, you can filter it. Uh, and things like that. We can get it on mass for your departments. If you're the head of business, um, you could say that heads of set create a query that can be run by the heads of sector role, and then say, you know, students when what departments or even just a count. You could count from the database how many students in each area have logged in within the past so many days and what the total is, and obviously calculate that as a percentage. So the the, the computing department has 20% of students not logging in, but the the business department only has 10%. So I, I can understand that in the sense that it, it's obviously from HR and from management points of view, there's definite use. But I think even if I were a lecturer and I was teaching on Moodle and I know I can go through the reports and see the activity logs and see it for everyone else. But the process is just, it's a bit of a pain, um, especially if I don't, if I'm not accustomed to doing it regularly. But if I could have a block that just sits on the side of my course and I, I can press one report that just says, who hasn't logged in in the last seven days. That that would be awesomely useful. It, also yeah, particularly good when you're starting a course, you know, when you initially like sort of induction stage and, and afterwards just to check if you've got particular people who are not jumping in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you just want to know, have they actually managed to get onto the course? Yeah, I mean, th yeah th I mean those those kind of tools. I mean, I'm sure if we sat down for five minutes, uh, we, we could come up with various sort of really useful reports just from a lecturing point of view. Um, and I, I know running reports in middle, just going through the usual activity logs and reports, it's not, it's not the most intuitive thing. Yeah. Um, can I ask them, sorry, you're talking about using a block. So what block are you adding in where you would, is there a particular block for um, SQL reports or? What we, what we generally use is we just, uh, we create an HTML block and put a simple hyperlink over to that plugin because obviously when you go into that plugin page, it will, uh, the, the main page for that talk reports, it will only show what's made available to that member of staff anyway. Uh, the general process is through site administration and then reports and then into ad hoc reports. Right. Obviously, obviously that's kind of semi-hidden because uh, obviously you can always see that with site administration, but you can still get access to it if you make it available via an HTML. The, right. plugin, the plugin hasn't been developed. It was, it, it's not been developed for a while. It's brought up to version Moodle 3.x standard quite recently. But that was just making it work. It wasn't going to add any more features. And one of the features that would be quite useful was to reflect that in a block. Um, but we we find if we add to all course pages a uh, link to that uh, um, that ad hoc page, and it only show obviously make a block that only staff can see. Um, then that will display obviously the, the queries that they've got access to, and it. it don't generally poke about. It's it, it would be nicer to be clean, uh, to be a bit cleaner in that sense, the transition of getting to that page. Um, but at the moment, we just put an HTML block. That's great, thank you. Um, yeah, does, sorry. does anyone else have ha, have an idea or, or, or something that they'd like to ask James as to what might be possible? Um, I, I was context. just going to add that whole engagement thing. It's not just about um, who's engaging with the course, who's, who's logging in, but who's lurking, who, who's logging in, but <laughs> not doing the activities. You know, so there, there's a whole, that, that engagement isn't just a, are they in or are they not? There's more levels to that. Who, who's who's um, replying and responding or, or doing activities? I can show you this query, actually. Um, I, obviously, there's uh, sensitive data in there, so I'll not actually run the query, but I'll... Um, and James, I, I noticed like sometimes your personal email came up 
during these recordings. So in the in the video recording, I I will blank all of these out. Right. <laughs> uh, right. So I'll obviously site administrator. This is Windows Live instances. Um, so I can show you how it works in a real context. Uh, ports. Uh, so you can see, in, in terms of uh, this is the result. So this is our distance learning instance of Moodle. So we've got distance learning results full. So that's every result for every course. Obviously, it's about the department, etc. It's quite a hefty query. It's over fifty thousand rows. For example, look at returns. Uh, return that only passes to split that up, of course. Uh, freshers results. So we do our program with the, the schools groups and keep it warm stuff over the summer. Uh, and induction type stuff, and that's to show. Uh, there was kind of criticism that there wasn't much comeback from that. that, that it was just a, a, a kind of nice to have exercise that they wanted to see the results and use it for matching into courses and things like that. So that's the results that the freshers have got from the uh, evaluation online learning uh, platform. Uh, obviously, it's quiz results. But um, the one that we have is, uh, in fact, I can edit that. Uh, I, I know we're we're running up to our, our 30 minutes just now. So just just to, to summarize then, so you've got the ability now to put custom reports in front of any specific group of users within a, a Moodle environment and they can run an, a report and they can customize the report because you can put in certain fields to adjust things like um, dates, etc. Yeah. That, that, that just seems like a really powerful tool. I know people talk a lot about learning analytics and, and the kind of things that that displays for you and you get a lot of useful charts and bar charts. But I think the ability to go to staff and just sit down and say, what would genuinely be useful? What information would you want to see thrown up in front of you just through like a, one or two button presses? And for, for me, learning and teaching and, and the, whole, the whole experience of teaching is I just want to do certain things quickly. <laughs> I want the technology to do that for me quickly. And, and sometimes Moodle can be uh, not, not the easiest thing to navigate and to get to the information that you want. So I, I think e even as a group here, we could probably sit down and come up with like three or four really genuinely useful reports from, this respect, from the perspective of, of a lecturer. Um, and and that 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 would be would be awesome. The, the query, the the tool itself, the the unique selling point really the ad hoc queries is that it delegates the running of those queries to either on demand or to the staff rather than the learning of developer sitting uh, coding those queries and then running them as and when asked to run them. It's something that can be written once, obviously run many, as it, the name suggests. So if you're sitting as a lecturer and you go, I wonder how my courses are doing, you can see if there was a report, you, you'd ask once for the report to be written. I want a report that turns this data about all my courses. And then to then get that data out just by one click. There may be data that is reflected within the front end of Moodle. There certainly will be data that you can get out through the front end. But to be able to just click one button, run it, and then get the most live data for that point in time and then just export it to CSV, which is obviously you can open in Microsoft Excel and you can manipulate that data and then look at how you're going to take action as a, as a teaching member of staff. Um, it, obviously, as you say, touching base with students, finding out issues. These kind of things are things you want to do quickly. Uh, and that tool, putting that data at your fingertips to be able to run it once instead of crawling through the front end. Uh, you spent put all the effort in and the, the first occasion is defining what the query will return. And then it will return it as many times as you want. And you could be sitting at home on a Sunday night at eight o'clock at night and you could run that query. You can get that information without having to speak to a member of technical staff to, to then create that. Okay, so, and and I I love the fact that James thinks that we're all going to be sitting at 8 p.m. on a Sunday uh, running those reports because that, that just shows his general optimism for the world. <laughs> and even though Alison is shaking her head. Um, <laughs> okay, so th this is the end of the recorded portion of, of today's session. Um, I should say that James is an active member of the, the Scottish Moodle user group. And, and he often um, talks with colleagues running Moodle in other colleges and universities and other organizations around Scotland. And he's often said, that he's willing to to share um, the the work that he does in, in terms of the kind of scripts 
and, and queries that he's put together for West College Scotland. So he, he's always been a very generous member of that. And, and I, I thank him for, for today's session and, and for his continuing work in the sector. So um, thanks for coming for today's exciting Zoom bombed version <laughs> of the virtual bridge session. You're welcome to hang on afterwards if you want to have a chat. Um, tomorrow we'll be welcoming Alan Ray, who is actually in the waiting room trying to get in, uh, <laughs> I suspect. Um, and he'll be talking about the, how copyright impacts us uh, especially in this current sort of era of, of enforced distance learning for a lot of our students. And he has some interesting things to bring up about that. So if you can join us then, I'd be delighted to see you. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're watching this recording, thanks for joining us. Hope you join us again soon. Okay, bye for now. <laughs>